On today's episode of Kids Connection, we're celebrating the holiday season by connecting you to joy. Ride along and see trains of all sizes. Create a festive and tasty treat. Share holiday traditions. Hear a new story. And hang out with Snow Monster. It all starts right now. This is an NBC Connecticut Kids Connection special presentation. Connecting you to joy. Proudly brought to you by ACES. Hi kids, welcome to Kids Connection. I'm Heidi Voigt. And I'm Shannon Miller. And on this episode, we are connecting you to joy for the holiday season. My favorite time of the year. And Shannon and I have an important job. We are on NBC Connecticut News every weekday morning with Storm Tracker meteorologist Bob Maxson. Speaking of whom, Shannon, I don't know where Bob went. I think I might have that answer. You know, he and Snow Monster, they're always out and about, and he is out with Snow Monster right now. We can catch up with them a little later on in the show. Okay, no doubt getting into some shenanigans together. Yes. So, Shannon, did you know one of my favorite things to do this time of the year, when it's dark out, is to go look at all the houses with the pretty lights. I absolutely love seeing all those houses as well. So much hard work goes into them and they look so gorgeous. Yeah. There's also a special place in East Windsor that gets into the festive spirit as well, along with a fun, family-friendly trip on the train tracks. Oh, Check this out. <laughs> All aboard! When you visit the Connecticut Trolley Museum here in East Windsor, you can get ready for a magical night of festive lights and lots of history about trolleys. We're going on our 45th season of Winterfest and the Tunnel of Lights. It's really cool to be able to ride on a historic trolley. I mean, we have trolleys that are 105 years old. So to be able to ride on a trolley that once was the form of transportation, but now in the year we are, and underneath all the lights, it's a really unique experience. And when you come to East Windsor to visit, you can choose to ride in a cozy closed trolley car, or if you're more adventurous, climb aboard a trolley car that's completely open. People love the open car. Even though it's a little chilly, it really gives you the full experience. You're riding out in the elements, you're riding through the lights, so it's really the, the choice of our visitors. Now let's head inside the museum, explore the trolley cars, and have some fun. Yeah. The history of trolleys go back all the way to the 1800s. These cars are old and they're still running after 130 years. Meet Justin Chassey. He's been volunteering at the museum for a long time. My parents bought a membership when I was 10 years old and we moved into the area. And at age 11, I started volunteering here at the museum and I've been here ever since. Did you know that the trolleys were an important part of life for Connecticut kids just like you? Unlike the school buses that kids ride on today, in order to go to school here, you had to get on a trolley car right here in East Windsor, right where our trolley cars are running, and go all the way out to Rockville, Connecticut. They were the only place in the area in the early part of the 1900s that actually had a high school. Local families continued to come to the Trolley Museum every holiday season. We saw, you know, that they were doing the Tunnel of Lights online and we thought it would be a fun kind of Christmas thing. Yeah, we did the open air trolley, so it was a little bit chilly, but not too bad, so yeah. they liked yep. it. Good music, you know, yeah. some nice carols. It really brings Christmas alive. It's a tradition for families. Families come back year after year just for this tradition. It's kind of like the start of the holiday. There's still time to visit Winterfest and the Tunnel of Lights. The event is open until December 30th. For more information about all the Connecticut Trolley Museum has to offer, go to NBCConnecticut.com slash Kids Connection. Now that we've finished our magical experience here at the Connecticut Trolley Museum, it's time to get a look at a different kind of railroading. Here's NBC Connecticut's Jolie Sherman. Thanks, Jackie. We're about to visit a very special place. Are you ready to see an amazing town that's make-believe and real all at the same time? Once you see it, you'll want to check it out in person every holiday season. Let's take a look. There's a special place on the shoreline, right along the Connecticut River. 
When you come here, you can go inside for a remarkable journey into the world of model trains. With Santa Claus keeping watch from this lighthouse, it's time for the trains to start rolling down the tracks. It's an entire town captured in one spectacular HO scale train layout, decades in the making. And you can get a close up, in person look when you visit the Connecticut River Museum in Essex this holiday season. Come see the long, majestic freight trains rolling along the tracks. Passenger trains bringing people home for the holidays. And get a special view, like you're the conductor of the train. As this special shoreline community keeps moving, there's one man who's worked for decades designing and building the layout. 29 years ago I started and it started small down on the first and it's grown into this fire breathing monster. I try to incorporate as many aspects of the Connecticut River as I can. The types of trains that ran here and you know the boats that were on the river. Every year, his goal is to add different elements to the layout, so there's always something new to see. It sort of evolves during the whole year. I'm already thinking about next year, but it's never quite finished. But I guess that's the story with most railroads. For Steve, the train layout is a labor of love, a love that started at an early age. Christmas 1953, walk downstairs, there was the train set. I'm an American Flyer kid. My brother and I, you see the uh, pictures, it's uh, funny. You can even see the larger Lionel and American Flyer trains run here at the museum. I've seen kids as young as one year old, clambering up and hanging on, can't even walk, but they want to see those trains. So get ready to experience the wonder and imagination of these model trains, now until mid-February. For more information about the Connecticut River Museum, go to NBCConnecticut.com slash Kids Connection. So Wendy, what holiday does your family celebrate in December? They celebrate Christmas. Um, I believe just Christmas. Um, Christmas? I feel like that's it. I don't really celebrate any holiday in December. We celebrate Christmas. In December, I celebrate Hanukkah and Christmas. My dad's side of the family celebrates Christmas, and my mom's side of the family celebrates Hanukkah. We sing this special song every time we light a candle each day. I can't remember the words, but we hold the lighter together, and then we usually sing it before we get our presents on Hanukkah for each day. Coming up after the break, kids, we're talking about Snow Monster, the Beast of the Northeast. Stay tuned for more holiday cheer. Kids Connection will be right back in just one minute. You're watching Kids Connection on NBC Connecticut, connecting you to joy. I celebrate two holidays. It's kind of mixed together. One's called Ramadan and the other's called Eid. So at the end of Ramadan, there's one more day called Eid and it's mostly on my birthday. Probably most of the time on my birthday, we go to my grandma and grandpa's house. It's very special to me. It's because you get to open presents and eat special food. It sounds like Christmas. Yeah. Like, like, different holiday. It's just like Christmas, but a different type of Christmas. I'm Snow Monster. 
Hey boys and girls, look who's here with us today. It's Snow Monster. We refer to him as the beast of the Northeast. There is not a snowstorm that I've ever seen that this can't handle. This thing is not only a powerful truck that shows people the weather conditions all across the state, it's also a really important meteorological tool for us, but we'll get to that later. Let's talk about this awesome truck. This thing has nine, because you know what, eight's not enough. It has nine high definition cameras, like the one you see up here, and that allows us to show you the weather conditions no matter where Snow Monster is on the prowl. You can see another one up on the top of the, of the truck. So cool. I want to show you where the reporters sit though, because a lot of times we'll take this out into the big storms and our team of reporters and meteorologists can report right here from the passenger seat because we have a camera and microphones and the ability to transmit live from Snow Monster back to the station and to you at home. So it's really a cool tool to, and it's also a very safe one because there's no storm this truck can't take. So we have Snow Monster. I want to show you something really kind of cool. This is kind of secret. This is where Snow Monster lives. Grrr. Well, happy Snow Monster. And this is where Snow Monster lives when there's no weather to talk about. It's got the nice furry blue. And this is where Snow Monster resides when it's not working on a snowstorm. We have, I mentioned those cameras. This one here is pretty cool. It points down Snow Monster and shows us the weather conditions. But one of the more important ones is where the rubber meets the road. And that's that high definition camera over there. It shows us the road conditions exactly where the tire is hitting it. So whether it's snow, slush, ice, or just pouring rain, Snow Monster can show us what's happening. Now, one of the most important tools with Snow Monster is this little thing. Doesn't look like much, does it? It's just this thing stuck to the rear view mirror. Well, this is an infrared thermometer that can measure the temperature of the pavement. Now, why is that important? Well, going back to science class, 32 degrees is a really important number. When the surface of the road on a cold morning like this is below 32, any precipitation that falls can turn to ice. If it's above 32, it's generally slush, and sometimes treatments bring those uh, road temperatures up too a little bit. So this actually sends an infrared beam down to the road surface, comes back into a computer, and we can show everybody at home the road surface temperature, because that is so important when it comes to being safe during the winter months. This thing's so cool that the Connecticut DOT, the big plow trucks you see on the roads, yeah, they have these too. The Snow Monster gives us such important information when we're in the middle of a snow or ice storm because road temperature means water or ice and that can make travel really treacherous. And look at these tires. We gotta be safe out there. Snow Monster's got some big old tires. As a team of meteorologists, this thing is so helpful. We love Snow Monster. I'm Snow Monster. Hey kids, I'm Chief Meteorologist Ryan Hanrahan. NBC Connecticut's weather team is connecting you to our Storm Tracker forecast, the state's most accurate, certified by weather rate. Snow Monster is an important part of the Storm Tracker team, and you can be too. If you have some awesome photos or videos of the weather changing, or your winter fun activities on snow days, have a parent or guardian scan the QR code on the screen to send them in. You could end up seeing your photos or videos on air or on our social media pages. NBC Connecticut's Storm Tracker weather team keeping you prepared and protected no matter the season. So tell me about the night before Christmas. I actually, I follow my mom's rules. I have to go to her room until, cause she says, she says, if you go into the living room where the presents are, they'll disappear which I know that's fake. I just, just go to sleep while my parents and my sister just is doing some stuff downstairs. I actually, before I put my Christmas pajamas on, after I take my shower, and then I go to sleep, I wake up, and then I continue playing with the dog until they wake up. One time I actually peeked. I know I'm breaking the rules, but I peeked and they did not disappear. But I, I went straight to my mom's mom's room after that and acted like nothing happened. I'm like, I just woke up and uh, yeah, so let's watch TV until it's time. Now what's your favorite part about Christmas? My favorite part is spending time with my family. 
coming up after the break. It's time to get crafty with some festive holiday cupcakes. Stick around for more Kids Connection. On Christmas Eve, my mom does that my, she pretends that my cat gets me a gift, but she's really getting me the gift from yeah. my cat. You're watching Kids Connection on NBC Connecticut, connecting you to joy. Hi, I'm Alison from The Great British Cupcake, and this is Arabella, my co-host, and today we're going to be making some holiday cupcakes. So, shall we get started? Yeah. We're using piping bags, but you could just use a plastic knife and take it right out of the frosting pot if you don't have a piping bag. So, if you want to spread some of this over the... You can take the knife, okay. and I'll put it on, and then you're just going to spread it around and make a slight little face on it. And then we're going to take our Nilla wafer. This is going to be the nose. Take a tiny little bit of frosting and put it on the back of this little chocolate button. And then put that on for the nose. And then we're going to put our pretzels on. And then we're going to take our eyes and put a little bit of frosting on the back of those. We're going to put it right on there. Great. And then we've got a cute little reindeer right here. And the next cupcake we're going to make is our penguin cupcake. A little swirl around, just like that, OK? And then we're going to put a chocolate cookie on top. So do you want to put the chocolate cookie on and then the wings? OK, and then we've got our little button. And then we're going to take our little candy eyes. And then we're going to give the Penguin, a little nose. And then we're going to put on our little feet. There we go. Nice little bow tie. And there's our little penguin. So the next one we're going to do is our snowman. Let's give our snowman a body first. So if I put the icing on or the frosting in, we have our white frosting in our piping bag and I'm just going to go around and you're going to smooth it out nicely. And then we're going to take our edible pen and we're going to give our snowman a little face and then we're going to put our little Sunflower, chocolate, sunflower seed in for the nose. So the next thing we're going to do is put on our little sprinkle red little buttons. And I'm going to make the arms out of some black fondant. And then we're going to have our little snowman. So that was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. So now, what would you say was the hardest part of making these cupcakes for Frosting. You? The frosting part. And what would you say was the most fun activity out of all of these cupcakes that you made? Which one would you say was your favorite? I like adding the decorations are all. Add in the decorations, okay. Well, there's so many different kinds of cupcakes you can make for the holiday season. And these are just a couple of examples, but I feel like it's the kind of activity you could do at home and you could even show an adult how to do it. Ikra, I know that you don't celebrate Christmas, but that's okay. okay. That's okay. okay. Well, you've heard of Santa Claus, right? Yes, definitely. Santa Claus is the guy who, like, he owns Christmas. So he goes around people's house and goes to people's chimneys and puts present under under the trees. Yeah, I definitely know who Santa is. He's a great guy. He He's is. the one that gives presents to all the kids in the world yes. that are on the good list. If you're on the bad list, you get cold. Yes. <laughs> uh, who's been naughty and who's been nice? Oh, uh, we've both been nice. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Not a lie. Not sarcasm. Not a lie. Still ahead. Cozy up for a new story time when Kids Connection returns right after the break. You're watching Kids Connection on NBC Connecticut, connecting you to joy. Heavenly, tell me, what things does your family like to do uh, around Christmas? We um, get cookies, a lot of cookies, because we have a lot of relatives. And we also um, give each other presents and we got to make a Christmas list or else if you get something that you don't like, you're going to have to keep it. 
How does Santa Claus get to so many houses in one night? Oh, he goes down the chimney and up the chimney. And that's, instead of just running out the, the house and climbing onto the roof to get back on the sleigh, unless it's parked on the ground. Because that would probably take like a week to, to travel around the world. Maybe, maybe he just go, goes around there with his reindeers and use some magic. I don't know. Oh, oh, because his um, little minion elves help him um, deliver all the presents just in time. Elves can also go to houses carrying presents for the kids and putting them in the house. Because the power of the rain, the, the first reindeer, Rudolph, is the lights and also the like the the magic in them. And if people don't have a chimney, he can just use magic to get in the um, basement or whatever floor and deliver presents. I think that the reindeers get really good sleep and they're the ones who make Santa sleigh fast and faster and faster. I love having presents. I would I would pay Santa. Yeah, I would literally give him all my money. To do what? Of how nice he's been. Hi, everybody. My name is Janet Lawler. I'm a Connecticut children's author, and I'm here today to read to you from my book, Winter Cats, illustrated by Ella Schmidt-Tanka. Willie was an indoor cat. He'd never been outside. Our life inside is cozier, his mother said with pride. Those outdoor cats are weird and wild. They're not like us, said Dad. But Willie wondered while he watched. I bet they're not so bad. One frosty dawn, he peeked outside and heard a joyful cry. On to Winter Carnival, cheered kitties sledding by. So Willie crouched and tiptoed out the open kitchen door. He longed to join their festive games. He had to see some more. A tabby hailed him. Hey, you're new. Come join our outdoor fun. Willie blinked, his whisker twitched. Thanks, that looks like fun. He swirled atop a sled of bark, careening down the slope, his tail entwined with one nearby to make a steering rope. Next, they played on icicles that hung along a roof. A tiger cat said, please, you first. They landed with a poof. Then all of them built snowball cats with acorns for the eyes before they flopped, creating shapes of angels just their size. A calico held out her paw and warned the pond is slick. Willie wobbled for a while until he turned a trick. He skated out and took a leap flying through the air. The others clapped as Willie twirled and landed with a flare. Too soon the sun was setting. Willie said, I have to go. He said, come along with me. I live indoors, you know. They slipped inside and shook off snow. Then Willie turned around. His mother stood there scolding. What's his company you found? Then visitors cried, Sorry, ma'am, and wiped the puddled floor. Willie said, these cats are nice. We'd like to play some more. And after all the games were done, he said, new friends drink up. Milk dripped off their whiskers as each friend enjoyed a cup. Now indoor cats and outdoor cats meet nearly every day. Together sharing friendship during all the games they play. Oh, 
Oh, Shannon, that was such a fun and festive story. You know my favorite part? It had yep. such a great message about friendship. I love that. Absolutely. <laughs> a great message. Couldn't have said it better myself. And we want to thank you for joining us for this episode of Kids Connection, connecting you to joy. And if you'd like to see any of these amazing segments again or have some fun with those holiday-inspired activity sheets, it is all streaming and available online right now. And you can grab a parent or guardian and check out Roku, Amazon Fire TV, YouTube, and of course, NBCConnecticut.com and our app. And I am definitely trying that cupcake project with my Ooh. kids this weekend. Okay, I want to see pictures yes. and I want to have one of the cupcakes. Cannot wait for that. <laughs> In the meantime, happy, happy holidays. holidays. Bye. Thanks for watching Kids Connection on NBC Connecticut. Proudly brought to you by ACES.